People have been begging for an Elder Scrolls MMO for hey. years, and now it's <coughs> finally here. I'm here with Matt uh, from the Elder Scrolls team. Matt, big news last night, first of all. Yep. Coming to the consoles. Yep. Uh, the consoles, uh, this new generation is, uh, they're so powerful, they're well above the min spec of our PC version. So yep. uh, it just makes a lot of sense that we just uh, offer the same experience to, uh, to two new audiences. It's a fantastic opportunity for us. Now, you know, MMOs on consoles have been uh, a bit of a minefield so far. What are you, uh, how are you guys approaching it? I mean, you're, I'm sure you're not just kind of porting it from the PC no. to these platforms. Right? Tell us about it. No, well, well fortunately, since the two new platforms are, are essentially uh, powerful PCs, it really helps that process. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's the same game experience across yeah. all four, but obviously on the PC you'll have mouse and keyboard and you'll have right. a, a, key, you know, a PC experience, and on console you'll have a controller experience. But uh, we're approaching it much as uh, uh, Bethesda did for Skyrim, the so, you know, where there were two different versions, PC and, uh, and right. console, slightly different, but generally the same, uh, the same okay. experience. Now, are you going to be able to sort of play in the same pool, everyone, or is it going to be separated by platform? No, yeah, we're definitely going to separate PC so players. We're going to play with PC players uh, and then uh, PS1 players with, uh, with, PS, uh, with, uh, with them and, uh, and, of Xbox course, PS4, sure, Xbox okay. One, and, and PS4 and PS4 exactly. players. Uh, we're doing that, and Mac players are going to be with the PC players, mostly because right. in PvP there's mouse and keyboard, and right. we want to make sure that everyone's kind of on a level playing field there. Now, one thing that I saw recently at the uh, pre-E3 tour where we saw yeah. it was uh, you guys talking much more about sort of the first-person experience, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. we, uh, you know, um, we're, we're really bringing that Elder Scrolls experience to, uh, to online, so we really ma wanted to make sure that we were doing the, the full-on Elder Scrolls experience, which includes the iconic first person, so, yep. you, you know, you see your hands. But uh, since it's an online game and there's stuff going on all around you, we also support third person, so right. we fully expect people to kind of figure out the, how they want to play and just go right. for it. You guys have really ramped up the first person. I know that's something you're showing here at yep. the, uh, the show as well, right? Ab absolutely. Yeah, we have hands on here at the show. Uh, we're very excited about it because uh, MMOs, especially of all games, they're really hard to talk about. Yeah. You'd really have to sit down and play it. And, uh, so that's what we're concentrating on now. Well, you guys announced this game, I think it was probably, probably about, what, a year ago? A little yeah, bit more than a year exactly ago. Exactly a year ago. Like exactly a year ago, that's right. Uh, how has the development changed? Because MMOs are always evolving, and I mean, you know, there's fans yep. who obviously have a lot of opinions, and you have some people, I think, sort of privately playing it now and whatnot. Yep. Tell us about how has the game changed in the year? Um, well, we've been in beta for two months now yeah. on PC, so, uh, um, but really, we have a tremendous advantage over kind of the other, other MMOs in that we're an Elder Scrolls game. So yep. we have kind of a base uh, that, w that we're making the game from, and that base goes across all experiences, you yeah. know, console, PC. So as long as we're approaching it from that perspective, we add the online elements to it. Right. So we're thinking much more as a, an online Elder Scrolls game than yeah. it is more a traditional MMO. And Elder Scrolls is known for incredible fiction, incredible yep. story, uh, incredible quest. Tell us about, sort of, for people that may not be familiar with it, how does this fit into the Elder Scrolls lore? I mean, this sure. is not a Skyrim MMO or anything like that, right? It's very different. No, yeah, we're, we're set about a thousand years before Skyrim. So uh, we're in an era, era of the lore where there's not so much written, it's kind of a time of chaos, there's no central, uni there's no empire if you're a, yep. if you're a Skyrim fan. Uh, it's before the empire was founded. So uh, we're in a time when player factions are forming and alliances and uh, you can actually fight other players and other alliances and kind of to, uh, to control Cyrodiil, which is the central area, and the imperial city, right. and, and crown a player emperor. So that's kind of our whole thing is we're in this time of chaos. Uh, it also gives us the ability to give uh, all the provinces that people know and love, they're still there a thousand years before, yeah. but we get the whole continent, not just one province, and uh, it's far enough in the past that we can tell our own stories, introduce our, our own heroes, but have enough callbacks to the future games right. which are coming, so people will be very familiar with it. Now tell us how you're, you know, one of the great things about MMOs is that obviously they, uh, they grow over time, they yep. do events that happen inside of them, their expansions yep. and whatnot. What is sort of your grand vision for sort of how this game will kind of evolve over time? Well, the magic of, of online games in general is that they never stop. Yeah. Like, uh, you just keep adding content over time, and we are fully committed to that. We're already working on post-launch content, right. you know, to make sure that what? we have things that come as, as, the, as the game goes. We introduce right. new stories, new quests, new areas, and so, uh, yeah, that's what keeps it fresh, keeps it, uh, keeps it fun, keeps it moving. Now, you're bringing it to consoles. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering about what the business model is. I, I didn't see last night. Did you guys talk about if it's free to play or if it's going to be? Not announcing that yet. Okay. We're, we're really concentrating on the console, uh, console, PC, Mac, right. you know, every, uh, um, uh, supporting all four platforms. That's really the focus of this year's E3. Well, it's amazing. You guys are a big team to be able to pull off all these platforms at the same time. And the plan is to ship everything sort of around the same time, go live? Yeah, yeah it's uh, spring 2014. And uh, we're, uh, yeah, we're hard at work on it. It's a lot of fun, though. It's, uh, 
We're, uh, we got a lot of work to do, but beta is going on. We're getting feedback right. from players uh, right now as we speak, and we'll be growing beta over time. And so uh, we'll get more and more. You'll be hearing lots more about that towards the fall. Yeah, and you announced last night for uh, PlayStation 4 there's going to be some kind of special console, or special beta access, yep. I guess? Yeah, yeah, that's for console. The okay. console beta will, will be exclusively on PS4 for a certain amount of time, but that doesn't affect the PC or Mac beta at all. Right. That, that's been going on for months now. All right, well, people are in there playing, yeah, having yeah, a lot of fun absolutely. with it. Lots uh, of feedback. It's an MMO. <laughs> absolutely. As you know, the, and it's an Elder Scrolls MMO, so people have yeah. lots of uh, opinions on it. Exactly. I know we're getting some social questions as well for people to find out uh, yep. what they have about it, so let's head on over there. Uh, I think, uh, Amanda, we got some social questions from Matt? Yes, we certainly do. Now, our first question comes from Brandon Burain, and they want to know, so are there dragons in Elder Scrolls Online? Oh, my God. Because I really like Shut the fuck games. up and don't ask that question. <laughs> uh, as everyone knows that played Skyrim, spoiler alert if you didn't, uh, dragons were kind of from the past and got thrown forward in time, and we are in the time when they are not there. We're in the time when they got thrown forward, so we do not have dragons, but we're yeah, introducing some really cool we know we new beasts. Uh, we have... Uh, uh, the main story of the game focuses around you fighting a big Daedric Prince, and he has some minions which no one's seen before yet, which are uh, big and awesome. All right, good question. Titans. Thanks for the info. Okay, our next question comes from Gustav Chirps 7 m Wants to know, what more can you tell us of day-night cycles? How drastic will the changes be, oh, dark night know. or the wind? <laughs> <laughs> we do have a day-night cycle. Um, it's a, it's a real-time game, so you can't sleep through it like you can in, uh, in other Elder Scrolls games. But uh, you can see, but it's, it's darker, and, uh, and uh, some different things happen at night than happen during the day. So, uh, but yeah, you can play fully night or day. So uh, we had to make sure they were fully playable both ways. Fantastic. All right, well, thank uh, you very much, Matt. Five, Matt. Four, Congratulations on the announcement about consoles. Thank we you. will uh, see much more of the game over on the show floor. Uh, back to you, Amanda. Great, thank you. Now, Jack Tretton was on our set just a few minutes ago, and he literally... So, that was fine. it? Yes. Well, I, I'm not going to say that was it. That was it? There was nothing. Nothing. They didn't even barely touch on anything that they talked about yesterday. Not even they talked about, but that was announced yesterday. Yeah, you're right. We saw a cool snake, though. We, what the hell was that? What was that? I... I'm going to take a wild stab and assume that it was uh, part of the Almeri Dominion. There's rumored, uh, it's rumored that there's giant snakes in the water or something like that, that the uh, Marmer, the sea elves used in combat. Mm -hmm. That was cool though, like, I mean, that was pretty cool. Because it looked like you were actually on the ship or something. It didn't look like it was tied to land, but I mean, we really didn't see much of it. Um, mm -hmm. You're you're actually going to be starting on an island yeah. for the Old Mary Dominion. Well, uh, no, you're starting on an island. Yeah, all through it. Well, that whole place is an island. Um, one thing I want to I, I noticed, and I'm really curious as to how they're going to do it. And I don't know if you played it, but Oblivion. Did you play that on console by chance? Um, on console, no. Damn. PC. Yes. Because well, Elder Scrolls Online has the similar. Lock picking. How exactly is that going to work on a console? Because on a keyboard and mouse, you click on it, you click on the tumblers. Mm -hmm. How are you going to do that on a console? Well, I mean, it's it's click and hold. You need to move over to the correct tumbler and then hold the mouse until it reaches a specific point. At which point, it'll start wiggling like it's about to break, where mm -hmm. you then let go. So I'm assuming if you just held X or A or some button that, uh, you know, it would work basically the same. I don't really see any problems well, that might no, occur. Well, I, I know that, but I mean, think of how hard it is to click on a tumbler versus on a console where you just move the trigger and it kind of, there's got to be set points for you to click on because you don't have free movement on, um, on a console. I mean, it, it seems to me like it is going to be a lot closer to what Oblivion was where you just need to move you know, in relation to a tumbler, and then, you know, do your thing. Like, you don't have to click on the tumbler itself, it does that for you. Yeah, I don't know, man, that interview really wasn't anything exciting. I mean, IGN's going to have one on Thursday, so hopefully Matt Fire gives a little bit more information as to what's going on. Um, but, I mean, with the announcement of ESO being pushed to 2014, they have to give us, not just us, but, like, the community as a whole, they have to provide us with 
something to hold us over. Like, I mean, you can't mm-hmm. give us a 2013 release date and say, oh, no, we're going to change it and not give us anything to be like, well, you know what, we're going to implement this in our time. Like, it kind of makes me wonder, if you're going to be taking three to six months longer, is there a chance we're going to see maybe the Thieves Guild being implemented? Maybe how is right. it, like, one of these future patches that you guys said is going to happen? Are we going to be able to see that in, as a content at release? Like, I, I would really like that, like, provide us with something. And his comment, oh, I just wanted to slap him. He made a comment about how they're already working on post-release mm-hmm. content. They haven't even touched DLC, or not DLC, they haven't even touched uh, um, Adventure Zones. Like I said, in that, in that post I made, he literally says, we've talked about this concept of Adventure Zones. So I, I'm... I've, I've said it before, I'm really worried about Endgame in this game, because it just it doesn't seem like they have a grasp as to what we're going to be doing, and 90% of your time in an MMO is Endgame. Like, they're too focused on the leveling progress, the character progression, they're too focused on that. So it's, so, it's what Star Wars The Old Republic did. They focused on it, and now when people hit Endgame, there was nothing to do. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Well, another way to look at it when they say they're already working on uh, post-release stuff might be that they're working on it because they want to include it prior to release, and that's why they're working on it. That right now it's post-release, but it's going to be released along with the game. Of course, that's you know an interpretation. It probably isn't true. I'm only hoping that you know when they say they're working on post-release stuff, release stuff like Thieves Guild, you know the Dark Brotherhood. Um, I would really other like to see that areas that they're doing that because they're going to be including some of it when they release the game. Mm-hmm. Like I would really, what I would really love to see them implement. And I mean, I highly doubt they will, but I think it would be a massive step forward in the right direction, especially because they pushed the release date back on us, is a morality system. If I... I mean, it's really hard to implement a morality system strictly because you cannot steal. I mean, that was probably Mm -hmm. the biggest part of a morality system being caught. But if they implemented that feature, I mean, that would probably hold a lot of people over. Because that was a big concern, the fact that you couldn't steal. And there was no repercussions to it. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, what they were saying about the problems with stealing, that, you know, you can't steal from your allies. Yes, you can. I steal from my allies all the time. I steal the clothes right off their bodies. I mean, what's the difference between stealing from your allies and going into an NPC's house and stealing from their nightstands? I mean, they're your allies. I, got, mm-hmm. I never really understood his point when he said that. I mean, you can't steal from your allies. Everybody on your I mean, faction is an ally. I mean, I can go to a marketer's bench and steal his loaf of bread. What's the difference? <laughs> right, and you know, you might as well make it that they don't want you to steal that loaf of bread, and if you get caught, you have to pay a fine. And if you don't have the fine, you get sent to jail, and you need you get, you know, probably an XP reduction, like if you were to die. But, uh, I, I don't know, maybe when they say you can't steal from your allies, they're referring to stealing from other real people, which I don't even see how they could possibly implement that into the game. Well, you you easily could implement it into the game, but it would cause so much grief. Like, just unbelievable yes. amounts of grief. Pickpocketing would go very well with the morality system. Pickpocketing NPCs, um... And, I mean, it'd be really cool if you could pickpocket enemy players, but again, there's a lot of grief that's involved with that. But with that being said, I mean, look at World of Warcraft that has pickpocketing. It's a pretty useless talent, but it's still pickpocketing. Mm-hmm. Like, it's completely useless. You don't get anything good from it, because it was strictly for one class. But, I mean, with Elder Scrolls being able to do it with every class, or every race, why is that not an option? Like, why can't I pickpocket from NPCs? Like, I mean, you can do it in Skyrim, and everybody was technically your ally. I mean, you go into a town, they're your ally. Well, they're neutral, yeah. So, I, I guess uh, that's something that needs to be looked at, right? Is that for a morality system, right now everybody's your ally, where with the morality system everybody is neutral. Mm-hmm. 
unless, you know, and then some people will become your allies if you do certain quests, if you do, you know, interact with them, trade with them. Or at least that, that's mostly how it worked with um, uh, Oblivion, Disposition, I believe it was called. Yeah. Part of the speech skill. Yeah. Um, but all in all, I mean, it, it was a pretty short interview. I was expecting a little bit more information, especially just because of what mm -hmm. was released last night. Um, maybe IGN's going to get something. Um, maybe they're going to release a little bit more from some of the participants who are at E3. Lucky bastards. I mean, <laughs> like I said, my biggest thing is they took a major thing away from us. I think they have to give us something. I mean, they. I think they have to confirm or announce something that is going yeah, I, to set us aside and be like, okay, you know what? It's worth it. At the very least, give us an explanation. Yeah. You know, of... Uh, you know, we're, we're pushing it back six, you know, well, I, I'm not, I was about to say six months, we don't know, it's in the spring, that could be... It's anywhere, you know, anywhere from, from three to six months, I mean, right. technically they said 2013, that could have been de December 31st, so let's go right. from there. They said spring, so we're looking at least end of March, minimum, to anywhere mm -hmm. end of June. I mean, there's at least, there's at least three months gap there. Yeah. And in, in hindsight, I mean, it's three months, it really isn't that long... But, I mean, when you think about it right now, you're thinking, okay, well, between March and June, that's like a year from now. But yeah, I mean, the game it, isn't, wasn't due to come out for six months anyways. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it's... As long as they're continuing to improve the game, I mean, I, I don't... Maybe they hit, um... You know, they hit a brick wall, and they... That needs a month to work around, you know. Something didn't work properly with another system, and... You know, it isn't three months of just up, uh, you know, updating it so that it can be played on the PlayStation and Xbox. I'm hoping that it isn't three months of that, and it's three months of update, updating the entire game, not just transferring it. Because otherwise, I would much rather not have it release on Xbox or the PlayStation to save those three months and just have it release as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and then have it released on those consoles, you know, much later, six months from now, because they are different mega servers. Yeah. Well, I in the in the blog post, article post, forum post kind of thing that I wrote, I I made comment as to maybe they did it because they want to release all the platforms at once, which in hindsight again makes sense. I mean, let's take a look at Diablo. Diablo came out on PC first. It got mm -hmm. a massive rage, horrible reviews right off the bat. Like, I mean, it just, it just wasn't the game people were expecting. Now they're releasing it on PS3, and it's slightly improved, but, I mean, the title itself has so much negativity towards it from the community. The people that are going to buy that game now is not going to be nearly as many as if they released it all at the same time. So if, they release, if Elder Scrolls releases the PC version first and say it has negativity the amount of people that'll buy it for the PS4 and the Xbox One would be lower than if they released it all at once. Mm -hmm. Well, it seems to me like the solution to that would just be make a good game that doesn't get negative reviews. It's and true, but release. I mean, you can't please everybody, right? <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, it's the hardcore gamer that is the smallest portion of the gaming community as a whole, but they have the loudest voice. They're the ones that get heard the most. And... <laughs> Elder Scrolls Online thus far is not your hardcore gamer. It's not. It's not designed around that person. It's designed around a casual gamer. Mm -hmm. Which I'm wondering uh, what they're going to be rating it. Well, that's my, like I said, my biggest concern is the end game. So, what if they please the hardcore gamer, they're going to upset the casual gamer. If they please the casual gamer, they're going to upset the hardcore gamer. Again, it, it's all a balancing act that one way or the other is not going to happen. It's never going to balance out. One side's going to fail. And I have a feeling with Elder Scrolls, because they're going to focus on the Elder Scrolls aspect, it's going to be the hardcore gamer. Which isn't <laughs> bad. I mean, as long as the game gives me a reason to log in, I have no issues. But if I, if it turns out to be like Star Wars, where I log in once a week, it's not worth my money. Right. Makes sense. But in three simple words, what did you think? What do you think of the last two days? Ah. Uh, oh. Well, right, I was never good words. at these. Five yeah. words. I was never good at these games. Um. <laughs> uh. Let's see. Overall, I, I 
I want to say I'm disappointed, but and I'm not going to use five horses. It's far too few. Uh, right now, surprised would be really the best way to put it because they, you know, have been constantly saying, you know, 2013 release, uh, PC and Mac only, and then all of a sudden they just completely go 180, saying, nope, now we're releasing much later and for much more consoles, and it just I, I'm concerned that they're going to make other changes that weren't planned based, you know, in relation to player feedback, which sometimes, and I'll say player feedback isn't always the most reliable because, in my opinion, players will always vote to make a game easier, you know, if not more balanced, just because they want to be, you know, the masters of everything. You know, with no effort involved. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad that they're listening to us, but they need to be careful with what feedback they listen to. Yeah, I agree. Like, in, in five words, all I have to say is give us something big soon. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's the best thing I can say. It's It needs to be done. We... You took something away, give me something back. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, I, I think you mentioned it before, that all if they show us Adventure Zones, at least what they have planned, even if it's not a video, it's just how they will work, you know, explaining that this is our, you know, even if it's just a sketch, even if it's subject to change, just to put the hardcore gamers at rest, that once they release, once they reach Endgame, there will be something to do. And I think that will calm a lot of people down, and it will make a lot of people stick through waiting that extra few months until the release date. That's all I got. I mean, I'm a little, a little upset that the interview wasn't as long as I thought it was going to be, or... Nearly as yeah, detailed. That, yeah, how long was that? Like five minutes? Oh, all is that? I mean, I in all honesty, when I saw last night's thing, I I suspected this to be a full fledged. Holy crap! This is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. I mean, it's with mm -hmm. game trailers. They're the official broadcasters. They're the one everyone's watching. It's on Spike TV. I mean, yeah. But I don't know. Maybe maybe they're saving something. But for the record, yesterday I called it. They announced their website was going down. I was like, holy crap, something big's coming. <laughs> like, I totally called. I was like, no, something big is coming. Some people, we, we were kind of leaning towards possibly the forums, which made sense. Wasn't, yeah, I, wasn't expecting console. I was uh, also very surprised about the website update for uh, theelderscrollsonline.com. I'm not sure if I should be honest with my opinion of the new website design. Gooey makes he made a comment in chat. He says delay of the game is good after seeing what's being put out for the players now. Um, there's no way it would be ready for the holiday in 2013. I disagree. I mean, from every instance I've been able to play at like all the conferences and everything, I've been able to play. The game has been relatively polished for the lower levels. I mean. Mm -hmm. My biggest concern is the end game. Like I said, there's very little to say about it or what's happening. But as to like the end game or the beginning part of the game, it's I would say it's very well polished. I didn't encounter very many bugs, and the ones I did were minor. Yes, I mean, there were no uh, game breaking bugs. Mm -hmm. There were not. I mean, well, yes, there are a lot of minor bugs, but you know that's that's what a vape is for. It's finding all of the minor bugs. Yeah, and you're gonna see a lot of people online going, "Wow, this is it was so full of bugs. I'm in the beta, and this is why they're postponing it. It's all buggy." No, no, no. Those little bugs that you encounter, probably from your what level one to ten experience, mm -hmm. are nothing. Like I mean, they they, I I, I don't like it when people try to try to push that. I mean, oh, it's buggy. Of course it's buggy. It's a game. Every game is buggy. I mean, World of Warcraft's been around for seven years, and it's buggy. 
or and it's prior to release, and there's still six to nine months, you know, before the official release. Mm -hmm. No, you know, they, it, they they postponed it. I, I don't want to believe they postponed it for the console thing. They didn't want to do it. I don't want to believe that. I want to believe it's because they're putting something into it that we didn't know. Well, I, I, I'm tempted. Like, I want to agree with you, but if they don't. Like, like if, if we get hyped up because we think that they're delaying the release because they're adding something else in, but they don't... I'm going to be going, upset. Right, and that's why I'm tempted to say we shouldn't assume that they're going to be adding more, that they're, they're just going to be super polishing what they have right now. Well, we, we shouldn't assume a lot of things, but we're, one, yeah. online, and we're gamers. It's what we do. We assume. Make assumptions. I mean, everything... Well, I would say close to at least 45% of the information that we know is speculation. Exactly, which... Right, which if they were to just tell us what the hell is going on, you know, we wouldn't have to speculate and assume that, oh, maybe they're adding other stuff in. You know, if they were... They just bluntly said, yeah, you know, we hit a brick wall, we're updating something, we're, you know, making sure that the transfer goes correctly... I mean, it might it might not have the best feedback, but they would get credit for telling us, you know, what's going on. Yeah, uh, Trust Epis says felt lied to because they were still out of a hit in the 2013 thing. And that, I think, right there is why they owe us something. They were mm -hmm. exceptionally adamant. They somewhat promised it to us in a 2013 release. And then, even... I would say in the last three weeks, all the interviews Matt Farrar has done, he specifically says, well, when somebody asks, well, when can we play it? When it's ready. In the last three weeks, he said this. Every other one, he said, 2013, 2013, 2013. So, I mean, I agree with Gooey, we don't want another SOTOR, but the issue with SOTOR was the fact that there was nothing to do at Endgame. The leveling, the progress, the story was phenomenal. The Endgame sucked. And that, mm -hmm. I think, is the issue right now with, with Elder Scrolls Online. And I think that's where they realize they're like, holy crap, we have nothing. And, uh, well, they know, what, you know, that the, uh, the consequences of breaking their uh, uh, promise for 2013. So, I mean, that they, I'm assuming that they've thought about the fact that we're going to be expecting something else. You know, if you're going to delay the game... You know, we, we do need to be compensated for that in some way. I'm only hoping that they don't think that allowing it to be played on the PS4 and Xbox Live is sufficient compensation. Because it's close. Mm -hmm. But I, I would say it's only, you know, halfway there. Well, you, you bring up the PlayStation Network and Xbox Live... I, had a, I posed a really interesting question to, to, on my Twitter last night. If they push this, well, they are pushing it, but when it releases on the PS4 and the Xbox uh, systems, PlayStation announced last night that in order to play multiplayer, you have to be a PSN Plus member. So that means you actually have to pay for it. Same with Xbox Live. You have to, be, mm -hmm. you have to pay a subscription fee to be on these networks. If, I was seeing some discussions about that, if yeah. Elder Scrolls Online also has a, we'll say, $15 a month fee, do the, are console players going to have to pay their network fee on top of their game fee? Like, that seems to be... I think that's going to be a really gray area for them as well. Hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of how... You know, I would respond to having to pay a network fee like that. And, you know, in all honesty, I'm just going to say I wouldn't be surprised. You know, I'd be mildly upset, but I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Trust Tempest says she think, or he or she thinks it's going to be uh, buy to play and doesn't believe that MX would do something like that. But, I mean... No, it, it's going Companies to be are greedy. They, they'll do it. And I mean, in all honesty, they say they're doing the console push because that's what the fans want. They have millions of fans that are going to be playing the PC version. They're doing this for a money grab. As, as horrible as this makes me sound towards them, it's a money grab. 
because of the new consoles, it's almost a straight port. There really is little work involved to converting it. Now I say that, but I mean, it, little work in comparison to designing an entire game, so don't mm -hmm. yell at me. Um, Which, I mean, they will, considering that they've been designing this game for, what, four years? They started nearly the same time as uh, Oblivion. Mm -hmm. Which is why we can see so many, you know, remnants of the lock picking system because the Skyrim lock picking and all that hadn't even been or I'm assuming it hadn't been fully fleshed out or developed yet. Mm. Which personally I like the Oblivion lock picking system better anyway. I, I love the lock picking system. It's it's great. It actually I don't want to say it takes skill, because once you figure it out, it's relatively easy. Right, it's uh, doing it in a specific amount of time. You know, the mm. master locks, you have 10 seconds to do five uh, tumblers. Yeah, and I think that's on a hard. console, that's going to be a lot easier because all you got to do is push one button to automatically go to the next tumbler. Whereas with a mouse, you have to align it on that small little rectangle. Yes, you, you do have to align it on your mouse on top of the tumbler, which uh, people should keep that in mind because there was some difficulty when we were learning how to do that. Yeah. You know, we, we'd, we'd get the tumbler or the, uh, the lockpick over the tumbler, and then we'd click and hold, and nothing would happen, and we'd start panicking because the clock was still yeah. counting down. Yeah, I, so I, you, I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm This whole console thing's funny. And it, again, I'm not sure if I want to believe a lot of the stuff Matt Farrar says anymore, because like I said, I said this earlier to you, that on June 6th in an interview with uh, Gamer Hub, he specifically said they're not thinking about making it on consoles. I mean, that was mm -hmm. five days later, they're like, oh, yeah, by the way, we're doing it on these two consoles. Which, I mean, well, you have to remember that it isn't 100% his choice, you know. It's... You no, know, no, I, I no, it's it. not. But, mm -hmm. I mean, I, that kind of decision isn't something to be made in five days. That is something that takes months of planning and budgeting for. I mean, it takes a lot of money to do that. Right. <laughs> You're going to have three different mega servers now. So you're going to have, well, there's going to be four or five because you're going to have the European one as well. Um, True, yes. And then not to mention all these mega servers are going to have how many far, uh, server farms within them that are all connected. I mean, that's a lot of money dedicated to that. And the 100% uptime for each PS3 or PS4, Xbox, PC, and Mac for just the Americas, now they're going to have to have one for Europe? Mm -hmm. I'm actually wondering... Um... I mean, you know, how many people are going to be investing in the PS4 and Xbox Live? What percentage of those are going to be spending their time playing The Elder Scrolls Online? Because there's going to be, you know, other games that are released with it. Oh, there, and, there'll be lots. I mean, look at how many people play the Xbox and PS3 version of Skyrim. I mean, there's thousands. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, I definitely but, I don't mean, see... They, people, I, mm -hmm. people didn't have to go out and buy you know, PS3s and Xbox 360s to play Skyrim. No, but they'll be, they'll buy... If you're a PS3 gamer, you're going to buy the PS4, strictly because it's an upgrade. I mean, it, <laughs> it's like, if you're a PC gamer, and you have an old model card, and the next model comes out, you're going to buy it. I mean, yeah. there's a little bit yeah. difference between that and the way console do is because when they make a new console, they make new games for it, whereas with video cards, it's a little bit different. But that's the same kind of idea. Hey, 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 let me chime in as far as the Xbox and the, there. If you looked at that? Skyrim sales, 85% <laughs> was on the Xbox and uh, PS3.